pleased to be joined by one of my all-time favorite Wolverines, the leading rusher in the history of the University of Michigan. Now, obviously, here is the running backs coach and uh, Mike Hart. Mike, thanks for joining me. And obviously, everybody wants to know how you're doing. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Life's good. <laughs> Appreciate you guys having me on. And uh, health is good. So no complaints at all. Good, good. And uh, obviously, you're back from Indiana. Uh, you were back on the sidelines. What did it mean for you to be back on the sidelines so quickly? And, and how important was it to you to get back on the field? You know, obviously, um, you know, health is obviously number one and taking care of all those things. And, you know, doctors said I was good to go. And obviously, I wanted to be back out there with my guys. And um, they work hard. They practice hard. They play hard. And um, kind of, you know, the expectation is the same for me. You know, um, we expect them to play hurt. We expect them to play injured um, when they're not feeling the best. And um, once I got cleared by the docs, it was time to go. So it's time to be out there. Uh, you guys have had in the backfield, the offense has had a hell of a year so far. Um, what is it that stands out to you um, from just your running backs room about what makes, especially your top two guys, Blake and Donovan, so special? You know, I just think overall the group is just um, they love football. Um, they show up every day. They work hard. They care. You know, they care about their teammates. Um, they want to be perfect in everything they do. And um, it shows out there, and they don't want to make mistakes, but just their work ethic um, I think is the biggest thing. And when you got guys that, that show up like that every day, it's easy. It's easy to come to work. It's easy to do those things, right? Um, don't have to force them to do anything. You know, they want to they work hard. You know, they want to know the blitz pickup. They want to know what's going on. What are we doing? What are we running? Um, day in and day out from not just Blake and Donovan, but CJ, Tavi, Leon, Isaiah Gash, Danny Hughes, all the guys. You know, they all show up with the same mentality, and it's fun to come to work every day. Well, that's one of the things that I've noticed. Last year, um, you know, with Hassan, this year with, with, the, with really the entire group, and you mentioned it there, we'll talk about all of the numbers. The numbers are outstanding. But one of the things that, that I love talking about, the wide receivers blocking downfield springs you guys for big runs, uh, but also blitz pickup. How important is it for you to make sure that those guys know where they're supposed to be and then when they get there, it's not an easy thing to do, is, is to block a blitzing linebacker or a safety or corner. How important is that for your group to be a part of pass protection? I, mean, I, th I think the biggest thing is to play without the ball. You know, um, first and second down, receivers are blocking, O-line's blocking, tight ends are blocking. And, you know, you have to do your job, too. When it comes to third down or pass plays that, you know, we have to do our job. And the biggest thing is that they, they're bought in, you know, that they know that's important. Um, they want to keep the quarterback clean. Um, no late hits, no, no fumbles, you know, all those type of things. And um, they take pride in it. So um, as I tell them, like, if you don't play without the ball, you can't play. And so the biggest thing is playing without the ball, whether it's fakes, whether it's, you know, QB read, polls, all those kind of things that you have to play without the ball. And the expectation is the same. You want these guys to block for you on first and second down. You need to block for them as well. And um, they buy in. Uh, let's talk about Blake Corn for just a little bit. Um, he's a guy that since he's been here, since I've known him, it's always it's it's it, 100 miles an hour. It's football all the time, and you know he takes care of everything off, off side, out, outside the field so that he can be focused on football. And you mentioned it. You know these guys, they're they want to work. They want to do that. How much do you actually have to control Blake Corum's workload during the week so that he doesn't overwork himself? I think that um, Blake's grown. You know, um, when I first got here a year ago, a year and a half ago, um, it was slow down, slow down, slow down. Now he knows. Um, he knows the, the benefits that it brings. Um, and he wants to practice every day, but, you know, you just lessen his reps at times and without him knowing. So he still feels good, like he's still working. But <laughs> yeah. definitely, you know, on Tuesdays. Coach's tricks. <laughs> yeah, on Tuesdays, he's getting a little less reps, and we build him up throughout the week. So um, there's definitely a, a method and mentality to that. Um, but – he doesn't know. Like he wants to work. He doesn't. He doesn't want to take reps off. He doesn't want to miss practice. Um, and so I just got to hold him back and just not let him know that he's getting all the reps in practice. When he's on the field, what makes him special? What is it? I mean, we can see it from. I can see it from a lineman's perspective. Like he makes a man miss and makes me look good. All right, that makes him special. From a from a running back, a guy that used to play at a high level. What do you see when you see Blake Corum? 
No, I think uh, there's not many phone booths anymore these days yeah. out there. But, I mean, he makes a man miss in a phone booth. You know, some of those cuts he makes, his shallow cuts, how quick he is. Um, he can make an old lineman right really fast and uh, make a linebacker miss really fast. And he just does a great job. I think it's one of those things where it's just God-given ability. Um, he's special. He's a special talent. Um, he's just a special person. So love coaching him every day and love the way he shows up every day. But um, there's not many guys out there like Blake Horn. Not many guys like him, not many coaches that, that get to coach a group of guys that had such a mindset of ball security. How do you put that mindset of ball security into your guys? Again, I mean, it's just you put the ball on the ground, you can't play. Um, I think that's just the, the culture in the room. They know that. Everyone understands that. And um, as we give gifts, if you put the ball on the ground, as we call them, you know, you, you get gifted a, a good surprise at the end of practice. And um, they just know how important it is. You know, you can't turn the ball over and win games. And they're, they're bought in. They believe it. I think Donovan's done a phenomenal job. He put the ball on the ground a couple weeks ago. But, you know, he's, he's a special player. And uh, his ball security from when he got here to now is just night and day. And um, they just buy in. It's just a want-to mentality. You know, if you care about the ball, then you're going to take care of the ball. Donovan's a guy that can play in a lot of different places on the football field. How much of a challenge is it for you to be able to coach all of those different things, all of those different skill sets that Donovan comes, that, that he's brought to Michigan? Oh, it makes you a better coach. You know, because um, Donovan Edwards can start slot receiver a lot of <laughs> most teams in this country right now. Yeah, um, He's a special, special talent, special player. And, um, you know, it just makes you a better coach. You got to learn how to coach the pass routes and do all those things that receivers do, that receiver coaches teach. And um, But he's just, when you have a special player, I mean, he makes it easy, you know. Uh, when you, re I, I, I believe this answer is probably done more in recruiting, in the guys that you bring here, in the guys that are in your room. But how do you keep both guys happy when you've got a player in Donovan or in Blake Corum who's second in the country in rushing? He leads the country in touchdowns, yet you've got a player like Donovan Edwards. Heck, you've got guys behind him that are really good running backs. How do you keep them happy all the time? Yeah, I think um, that's that's what we get paid to do, you know, as coaches. And you got to control your room, manage your room. Um, but again, if you have good good guys like Donovan, I mean, you know, I've said this before, but I mean, last year I mean, he didn't play much. He's a five star kid, you know, and um, just his mentality, the way he shows up, the way he works, that um, he kind of set that culture. So the next guy can't complain behind him because Donovan had to do it. Yeah. Right. And. Blake had to wait a little bit, right? And so Hassan had a lot of carries last year as well. But Blake was the number two guy. And so I think when those guys set that culture and set that movement, this, they're not going to complain. They're going to show up, they're going to do their work, and they're happy for the other guys in the room. It just sets that standard. And so the next guy, you'd be a bad person if you complain because these other guys didn't do it, and they're really successful and really good. And so, um, you know, a guy like Donovan coming in and, not playing a lot as a true freshman, even though he was talented enough to, I think that just sets the culture in the room and the guys know, like, hey, Donovan didn't play. What, what am I complaining about? Yeah. You know, and um, it's just fun to be around them, to be honest with you. They're just good guys. Well, there's a lot more I want to talk to you about. Some more guys in the room as well as the matchup this coming weekend. We'll do that when we come back. This is Inside Michigan Football from Learfield first three games of the season we saw you guys go through the roster uh, a lot of guys got a lot of opportunity um, who stood out to you uh, I know since then we've seen CJ Stokes we've seen Isaiah Gash but who stood out to you early in the season as guys that you're starting to build trust in you're starting to say hey, you know they may start being able to earn some more opportunities yeah I, I think you'll start with CJ Stokes I mean he's a talented player he's He's, uh, I mean, you saw last week, he almost broke one at the end of the game there. Yeah. Um, he just stepped out of it. So he's um, he's talented. Isaiah Gash is coming along as a walk-on. I mean, just a just a great kid. Um, but, yeah, I think CJ is going to have to help us this year, and he will help us this year. And um, Tavi's still getting better every day, too. You know, Tavi or Dunlap. So um, don't want to lose him in the shuffle. But I think CJ's the guy that um, he's the next man up. And um, obviously had that early fumble against um, Maryland. Um, I think it was that, again, if you fumble, you can't play, right? So he understands that. But um, he's a kid that is talented and going to be a really good player here in the future. 
how much do you get a chance to step back? Because I know when I was here, right, it was, hey, by the time you're juniors and seniors, right, you are tasked with, we talk about legacy and coaching up your own guys, not just relying on the offensive line coach or coordinator or head coach. And how much do you get a step, chance to step back and watch Blake as the veteran in that room really help the younger backs? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, Blake and Donovan, yeah. you know, um, Donovan acts like he's a senior right now. <laughs> the way he acts, so um, yeah. he came in with that confidence, didn't <laughs> yeah. you know, he? That deep voice, and he yeah. sounds like a fifty-year-old man. Um, but um, I just think that that's that's part of practice. That's part of you know me letting them do it um, during practice, saying, "Hey, go correct him. I'm not going to correct him. Mm -hmm. What did he do wrong?" And um, they do it. They they you know they take a hold of it. They know when something's wrong. And they go get them. They go tell them. They go tell CJ. They go tell Tavi. They go tell Gash. They, you know, Donovan and, and uh, Blake, they handle it. And, you know, I don't have to yell as much anymore. So it's a good thing. Keep my voice. How much does the conversation come up about how important this, this matchup is? The rivalry. I know it's, it's one of, you know, what, nine Big Ten games. But this one matters a little bit more. What, what, how much do you guys talk about the rivalry between Michigan and Michigan State? I think it's huge. Um, we talk about it. There's no doubt about it. Um, everyone knows what's on the line. Everyone knows what we want to do. Um, everyone wants to win. And I think especially in-state guys, talk about a guy like Donovan, you know, some of his former teammates, you know, play at that school. And um, it's, it's just important, you know. It's important. When you live in Ann Arbor, when you live in the state of Michigan, this game is huge. You know, we have neighbors that are Michigan State fans. You know, my son goes to school with Michigan State fans. Like, it's for everything. It's for every, you know, just bragging rights for the year. And um, it's it's really, really important to us. And um, we're going to put everything we have in to try to get a victory. How much do the guys want to know about your experiences in this game? Because <laughs> <laughs> there's been a couple of moments. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, things come up and uh, we talk about it. We move on. You know, uh, it's the way to say it. So yeah, we talk him, about I tell, it. I tell him, move don't on. be like me. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about the good moments. Um, and and you, Paul. All right, the the trophy. Yeah, yeah. What what would it mean to have him back? And how important is it for that he gets back here to Ann Arbor, where his true home is? I, I think it's huge. Um, my, my son has a mini Paul Bunyan trophy, and he had it sitting out last year. And I said, we lost. Put that thing away. Uh -huh. I don't want to see that thing out in your room again until we get it back. And so it's huge. We want Paul back. My son wants to be able to put Paul out in his in his bedroom. And um, we, we, we want to get him back. We have to get him back. And so uh, obviously that's it's a message that you sent to your son. It's a message that you've sent to the to the players. But the lessons learned from last year's game and the one bump in the road was in East Lansing. How much has that motivated your group? I think they know. You know, um, Michigan State is a good team. They are a really good team. And um, they've had some bumps in the road this year, but they are a talented group of players, and they're a strong defense. Um, they know how to stop the run. They know how to play defense. Um, and so it's going to be a challenge. And so the guys know. You know, they know that we're not just walking in. They know what's up against us and that we have to show up and play our best game to win. I got about 30 seconds, and then we got to go to break. But when you look at that offensive line that you guys are running behind, what do you see when you watch this offensive line operate? I think they're just a, a tight-knit group. You know, Coach Moore's done a great job, and just the chemistry between them all, um, whether it's Trent in there or Carson in there at tackle, the guys don't miss a beat. They don't skip a beat. And um, with Zinter, I mean, they just they play so hard. Ryan Hayes, you know, Olu in there. I mean, the guys are just fun to be around, and they love ball, and they love each other. And uh, that's just how this team is. And uh, they work hard, and they play hard. Well, Mike, I appreciate it. Glad to have you back, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight.